Alright, we're gonna take a look at Barotrauma's submarine editor. There aren't very many tutorials out there. I personally wasn't able to find any good ones whenever I was trying to learn. Uh, the developers uploaded a master class of sorts. I had to slow it down to 0.25 times speed and that got me started, but past that I had to pretty much teach myself. So we're going to go over the basics of what you can accomplish in the submarine editor and kind of how to play around with things to make your sub work differently. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is we want to figure out how tall we want the sub to be. So the to determine how long how tall a floor is going to be, you can go into the filter here and type in door and you can just grab a custom door, place that and that's about how tall the level needs to be for a character to be able to fit in it comfortably. So once you've sized it, you can go back to the filter, and if you type in horizontal, we can find the large horizontal inside wall. And so you just click and drag to make that, and then you can actually copy and paste things, and we'll put it at the top and bottom of the door, and here we have one level of the submarine, and you can pan around using WASD and zoom in and out using the mouse. So I'm going to build something very similar to what they built in the master class, at least in shape. Uh, it's going to be three floors tall, so I'll go ahead and size that out by placing extra doors. And adding the walls. So on the bottom and top of the submarine, we can just use the hull of the submarine instead of putting these interior walls. And so your hull is made up of a shell. The shell in the filter is shell A. So you can type that in and find shell A zero degrees, and this is going to be your top and bottom. Very similar to the interior wall, you just click and drag. And then to make the bottom, if you copy paste that and hit control M, that'll flip it upside down and you can use that as the base. So this will be how tall the submarine is and the entire thing needs to be enclosed in these shell pieces. That'll be what determines collision with the outside of the sub. Uh, and then from there, the only thing you, the only other thing you need to uh, to be external is the engine. So the next thing I'm going to place is the engine, and we'll give it a floor to sit on. And then we need to figure out how we want to shape the shell around the engine. If you mouse over it, you can see the green box that highlights around it is the portion that needs to be inside. This uh, thruster back here is what needs to be outside of the sub. So we'll grab the vertical version of shell A, which is shell A 90 degrees, right here. And we'll just place that there right along that green border. So now to slope the sub down to connect with the bottom wall, we'll use uh, smaller connecting pieces. So in this case, I'm going to grab a 60 degree piece, which will be right here, and I'm going to flip that upside down just using Control uh, M and Control N. Control N will do your Y axis flip and Control M does your uh, X axis flip. So I'll place that there, and then to add a bit more of a slope. I'll grab an 18 degree piece here, and again, uh, control M to flip that upside down, and then I'm going to flip it on the Y using control M. So I'm going to drag this wall over. Once I select it, I can use the boxes at either end to drag it wherever I want it to be. I'm going to drag it over and use that to kind of align these pieces. So nothing aligns perfectly. But once you get it close, you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard, one press at a time, to try and align the texture as best as you can. 
and then make sure they overlap a little bit. So I'll do the same thing over here. Make this line up, overlap a little bit. We're going to move this up. This needs to come over a little bit. And then you just have to finagle it to make everything line up properly. So that's about where we want to be in the X. So we'll line up the Y now. Okay. Size that over. And everything is overlapping properly, so I'll just adjust that down slightly. And there we've got the taper into the bottom of the sub. So the engine, you can see there's a bit of a gap between the engine and the floor here, so I'll just select the engine and again use the arrow keys to clip that texture into the wall's texture. And I'll drag the wall into the hull to keep there from being any weird issues from lighting cracks. Alright, so now we'll taper the top of it, and that'll give us the shape of the back of the ship. So for this, I'm going to grab a 30, another 32 degree piece here. That'll go there. And then an 18 degree piece. Flip that on the Y, drag this over so we can use it to size in the Y, get this about, about where it needs to be, and we'll adjust this into, drag this down so that we can line up with the top here, adjust that relatively into place. And then bring this down where it needs to be to line up with our top. Drag the engine wall down further to line up the curve. Create the overlaps. And there we go, we have the taper of the back of the ship. So from here we can go into how we want to actually uh, lay out the systems in the interior. And there's a few things you need. You need the engine, you need ballasts, a control center, oxygen generator, and some form of electrical room where your reactor will be and junction boxes, that sort of thing. Everything else is optional and is pretty much left up to you. Uh, if you want to be able to complete actual missions properly, you'll need a uh, docking hatch so that you can dock at the end of the mission. Other than that, it's pretty much up to you what you actually want to include. So I'm going to start laying out the interior of what this is going to look like, and I'll start that by grabbing this vertical wall, and creating a little bit of overlap there to kind of uh, section off what will be our engine room. Place this near the top of the engine, and drag it over. So now we can actually move this door uh, where we want it to be for the engine room. So we'll put that there for now to segment off the engine. Uh, so whenever you are laying out rooms, it, and the shape of your ship, it's important to note early on that eventually the interior of the sub will be determined by these holes. So whenever you click and drag, you can set them visible on the left bar over here. This is what it looks like. And it can obviously only be rectangular. So this will determine every inside room of the ship. So if you try to have a room with some kind of taper like this, then your hole is either going to be too small to actually be the room or it's going to extend outside the ship. So you need to segment everything so that it is as close to rectangular as you can get it to prevent there from being issues like that. 
So with that in mind, I'm going to put another vertical wall down here to segment this off a bit, and we'll come back to how we actually want to shape that later. So in terms of where we want to lay things out, again, similar to the masterclass the devs did, I'm going to go ahead and place the reactor near the center of the ship, right about there. We'll drag that over, we'll drag that wall over a little bit. We'll give it a roof and then section off the reactor room. To transfer between levels of the ship, you need a ladder. And the ladder is another click and drag. Once you've got it placed, you can size it with the white boxes at either end. And then to section off areas of the ship, you can use a hatch. So for now, just as a placeholder, we'll grab the custom hatch right there and move him into place. And again, the textures might be a little off, so you can adjust using the arrow keys on the keyboard, which you can also use to center the ladders a little better. Uh, whenever you are deciding how far up past the floor the ladder should go, you've got to remember that whoever is whatever character is climbing up the ladder needs to be able to come fully above the hatch before they're able to actually drop down off of the ladder. Otherwise, the, they won't be able to close the hatch beneath them, and they will just fall back through. So it's got to be tall enough that they can actually come all the way up through the hatch. Uh, I don't know exactly what that height is. I usually build the sub and then go into a sandbox mode and test it. But uh, to keep people from falling back through the hatch once they're all the way up, you can grab one of these platforms and click and drag over on top of the hatch. That way, whenever someone successfully makes it up through the hatch, uh, they don't just fall back through. They have to actually press down on the keyboard or S to go down to the next level. So we'll lay that out there, and then we'll bring the doors a little closer to the hatch. Determine how we want to size these rooms later. So to lay things out a little more, we'll make another hole there. Have this ladder come up all the way. Put our hatch there in the platform. All right, so like I said before, we have to uh, be able to dock if we want to complete missions. So what I'm going to do now is create a taper up to where I want to place the docking hatch. And in this case, I think I'm going to kind of center it above where the reactor room is. So the automated docking hatch is the prefab that they provide. And whenever you place it, I usually align it about there. And you'll see there are these two labels here for the toggle signal in. That's going to get more into the, electri uh, the electrical wiring part of all this that we'll get into a little later. Uh, for now, just there's a hole in the texture here, so again, using the arrow keys. I will line everything up and then create an overlap and then adjust that a little bit to fix this corner. All right. So for the other side, we need a taper back down. So I'll grab a 18 degree chalet and line it up. So I'll line it up against this texture first that I know we're okay. You can uncheck boxes on the right 
or on the left bar to hide things that you can so that you're better able to line things up properly. So I'll hide the hatch temporarily and then I will drag our new section of wall over like that. And again we can unhide the walls later so you don't have to worry about covering up the electrical stuff here. We'll be able to access it later. All right, and then we need to bring this section of wall over, create an overlap, and that'll be where the docking hatch is, so we'll create a ladder for that. If you uh, remember earlier, I pointed out that we need to have roughly rectangular rooms, so this taper that flows along here isn't going to work. We won't be able to create a hole that's the right shape. So I'm going to use interior walls to block that off. Uh, on the bottom left, we can see previously used. So I can grab a large horizontal interior wall from that menu, overlap it into here, and I'll drag it to about right there. We'll grab the vertical wall, start it alongside the hatch, and then drag it down to make an overlap. Again, adjusting using the arrow keys to make the textures line up properly. And then if you highlight this whole thing, or we don't want to get the shell mixed up in this, so maybe just click the first one, control click the second one to select them both, copy paste, and then a flip and then we can just line it up over here moving both things at once to fix our alignment like that and then we can shorten this up a bit and there you go now this will just be dead space and we have a rectangular room along here and a little rectangular section for the airlock All right. So we need to figure out where we're going to put our command room and true to the design uh, that the devs used in their class, I'm going to place the armory to the right of this reactor and then I'm going to place command up here. So I'll grab one of our vertical walls, use it to block off the reactor room and we'll make a hatch about there copy this wall over here the textures look fine and then we will shorten this up a little bit and then drag this whole thing out that's a little big for an armory so we'll just paste that about there and determine how we actually want to size it later and then drag these back all right so I'm going to I'm actually going to make that a little longer All right, and then we will place command up here. Use a hatch as a placeholder there for another vertical access shaft. And then we will grab one of our doors as a placeholder about there. Drag this over. And this will be where our command center is. So the command station needs a nav terminal so that they can pilot the ship and then a status monitor is helpful so that they can actually see uh, what the different areas of the ship are and what their condition is whether they're full of water what the air quality is it depends on what you have enabled all right so the with these terminals we can click into character mode in the upper left here and see that when you open it up you only see the compass and when you open this one up you only see the uh, status monitor 
So what we can do is actually in the settings of these, if we get out of character mode, you can see under right under tags, we've got a checkbox for display side by side by linked. So we'll check that on the nav terminal, check that on the status monitor. And now if we hold space with the status monitor selected and click on the terminal, we can see a purple line appear between them. That's a link. So now if we jump back into character mode and open it, we see both on one screen. Linking is going to be much more important later, but it is uh, useful for, as far as I know, the only, the only things, uh, the only other things it'll be used for are linking guns to loaders and linking the oxygen generator to vents, but we'll get there. All right, so this is our command center. And for now, as placeholders, we'll put a couple of periscopes and see if we want to wire them up later. But we'll do that just to space everything out. All right, so this is about where the front of the ship is going to be. So at this point, we're going to start tapering down. So we'll grab another shell A. And we're going to slope the sub down and then have a cap on it. So we don't need to be incredibly concerned with actually uh, making this into a circle of any sort. We can handle that uh, by just putting a little structural cap over it so that it looks good from the side. But you got to remember that the overall the external shape of the sub isn't what the primary concern is. What matters is what you put inside of it because that's what players are going to see 90% of the time. So need a good way to shape this down. So I'll grab these little shell combos here and I'll uh, flip that line it up there, and then adjust it with the arrow keys, make an overlap, and then we'll drag over the bottom of the sub, roughly space that out, grab another uh, shell combo, flip it, I will line it up with this one's texture so that we keep the sub uh, relatively even. Drag this over and then line that up. Okay, so now at this point I'm just going to take a vertical wall piece and uh, cap that off. That'll also help fix the alignment here. Okay. And that looks fine. And then I'm going to drag this wall all the way into there. We'll move this back a little bit so that we don't have quite as much dead space there. And then this will just be another block of dead space because we can't really work with that shape. Uh, we'll put another hatch here. Drag this over. and have it fold into that texture there. And then we'll grab another vertical wall and place it here to section off that. So that's the general shape we're going to have. Uh, to make the end look a little better, we can, if I can remember what the filter is for it, to go to structure. Here we go, front, and we'll grab submarine front A, uh, just to make it look a little better and hide the fact that there is no actual nose to the submarine. So I'll line that up a little better using the arrow keys, and that's about good there. And we'll just nudge that in there a little bit. 
All right, so that's the general shape we're going to have. It's a little long. We'll probably shorten it before we're done. The reactor room is a little big, but we can tweak all that later now that we have a general layout of what we want. So true to the way uh, the master class was done, this is the same shape. Uh, we're going to create an airlock here, and we'll have down here be ballast. So we'll start sectioning things off. This down here will be part of the gunnery. Make it a, maybe shorten that up at some point. Down here we will have ballast, and then over here we'll have an airlock. So we'll put a wall there and a door here. So now it's, uh, the name of the game is sizing everything, figuring out how we want everything to be spaced. So if this is going to be part of the gunnery, we'll stick true to the previous design and we'll make this the rail gun. So we need a periscope to control the gun. We need a rail gun loader to load in the ammunition, which I will just place here and we can space it later. Uh, a rack to hold extra shells. And then we'll come back to anything else we need later, but that's a good start. We obviously need a hatch for people to get in. So we'll put that there. We've got a little bit of texture misalignment here. So I'll nudge that wall over to close the gap. Grab another horizontal wall and close that off there. And the texture seems to line up fine. So before we forget, we'll grab ourselves a ladder, line that up roughly, drag it down to a more reasonable size. Okay. So move this over a little bit, drag that over there. That looks fine. All right. So here we have where the railgun will be. We'll grab a few more periscopes, and we're going to put four coil guns on the ship, two in the front, two in the back. So we need four periscopes. So we'll put one here. Two, three, four. I'm just placing them roughly now, and they can be spaced later. And we'll grab coil gun loaders, one for each coil gun. So I will stick them there for now and again space them a little better later grab a couple of ammunition shelves and there you have it so uh, in the armory we need a locker for the uh, guard to be able to or cabinet rather for the guard to be able to store everything so we can put that there we can grab a couple of ammunition racks Another railgun uh, shell rack. You have the option of weapon holders to place uh, guns in to hold them on the wall. And then to fill the space, I'll just stick an extra cabinet in there. And I will nudge this over away from the cabinet. All right, the reactor room is pretty simple. We'll put a cabinet in for storing things like fuel rods and other engineering materials. And then we need something to hold the fire extinguisher for when the reactor inevitably catches on fire. So if we put a bracket down, we can grab the fire extinguisher and spawn it, hop into character mode and actually pick it up, and then move it into the rack. All right. Here's where we plan on putting the airlock. So we need an opening in the bottom of the ship. So I'm going to drag that over to make room for a hatch. Copy a new one and then rogue hatch. Then drag it over. I'm going to line that up with the wall. 
We'll put the hatch there and drag. Maybe space this a little better. Don't need a ton of room for the airlock. And we'll line this up against the hatch like that and then nudge that over to fix the textures. All right, so the airlock will literally just have this hatch and then a pump to drain the water. We'll make this room over here medical. So we'll lay out a medicine cabinet, a toxin cabinet, uh, put in a medical fabricator, and a cabinet to store things in. At this point, laying out the systems past the, the basic requirements, right? You've got the engine, the reactor, the command center, and maybe the hatch. Past that, laying out and determining what goes in what room is entirely free reign. There's no set way to do it. You don't necessarily need a medical bay at all, and you certainly don't need to have you know, this specific layout of items. But for this example, I'm going to keep true to the design they had, the devs had in their master class, and then the way I, the ways I modified it uh, to use in my own servers. So up here in the engine room, we'll have this double as engineering. Place a fabricator a deconstructor, and a cabinet. And then I will uh, copy-paste this fire extinguisher and bracket over here. I'm going to place junction boxes up here. And I believe we need 10 of them for this particular layout. Okay. Junction boxes have a constant input and output from whatever power source to anything else you want to power, but they cannot supply a lot of charge very quickly. So the guns are typically powered by superconductors. So I'm going to use two superconductors. I'm just going to stack them and then we're going to have a battery backup for the sub. So we'll do that there. So I'm just going to modify the textures a little bit to make things fit. You can actually, if something's not lining up quite right, like this battery is appearing behind the top of the other one, if you click on the texture you can see the sprite depth if you adjust that to be higher, they move more toward the back. The lower it is, the more they're toward the front. So I'm going to set this one at 0.84, and that hides the top of it behind the other battery. Okay. Up here, we'll put doors on either side of the hatch here. Use this as our utility room, so we'll place our oxygen generator. And then we can put a large diving suit cabinet here that has diving suits and oxygen tanks. Normally I'd put that down near the airlock, but with this specific design there's no room down here. And then we can just use this, uh, the remaining space, as a cargo bay. So I'll just put down a couple cabinets for now. All right, so that leaves down here as our ballast. Uh, whenever I typically do ballast on ships, I have each ballast as its own segmented piece with hatches coming down into them. Uh, in this case, just to keep things relatively simple, we're going to have this entire thing function as ballast segmented off by doors. So the door will keep each thing 
separate and uh, and give the pilot more control over the ship uh, while also making it relatively easy to walk through and check everything. So ballasts just need a pump. So we'll split it up roughly like that. Okay. All right, so that's the general layout of what the ship is going to look like. Everything is segmented into the roles we want it to play. So now we can start defining hulls. So the hull is going to be, uh, it's going to determine not only how rooms appear on the status monitor, it's going to determine the mass of the ship, and it's going to determine where the interior is, what's going to fill with water, that sort of thing. So we want to make sure that we have everything segmented uh, the way we want it to appear when we're all done. So we'll section off this, give it a give it a platform. When you move an item, uh, so undo and redo is uh, not redo. Undo is stored on a per item basis. So if I grab this hatch and move it and click off of it, Control Z does nothing. But if I click the hatch, I can undo it back into place. And then I missed some platforms over here, so I'm going to go back and redo those quickly before I forget. Like I said before, the platforms keep people from falling back through the hatch. Otherwise, they'll climb up, try to get off the ladder, and just fall back to the previous floor. We'll want one in the airlock. All right, and that's the general layout. So now we will define what the interior of the ship is going to look like. So we'll drag out our holes, define the medical bay, and if you click on a hole once you've created it, you can name the room. You have presets that you have to choose from or it won't be recognized by the status monitor. So if we click on the ellipse, we can scroll down through here and find what we want, in this case med bay. And then you just hit cancel and now it's the med bay. So from there we can define the engine. Bring the hole here, and we'll stop it about there. This is the engine room. Define that. And then we'll define engineering. An important thing to note is that the way that water flows within the ship is determined by gaps. So if we make gaps visible here, we can see that doors and hatches provide natural gaps, but there is no gap between these holes here. So the this will essentially function as a visible wall, this line right here between these holes, unless we make our own gap. As it is now, if the engine room started to fill with water, it would just stop here. It would never propagate through the rest of the ship. And with this design, you would never be able to drain it. So we grab a gap and just uh, drag it along the two holes there and I'll make gaps visible again I'll delete the one I placed by accident and then the arrows will show you where it's going to allow water to flow so two arrows means water can flow both ways and we're good there <laughs>